Okay, well today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about rate of change in slopes. We're in chapter 5, 1. Uh, the objective is to find rates of change from tables and to find slopes. Our standard is A1.2.2 and A1.2.3, which is working with rates of change and finding slopes from uh, lines of equations. So the first thing we need to know is what is a rate of change? A rate of change is basically uh, a relationship between two changing quantities. So it's a rate of change in the dependent variable, which we said was um, going, excuse me, up and down, and the rate of change between the independent variable, which is going left to right. So basically, we're going to use this idea that it's like saying the delta, which means change in the y over the change in the x. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. So problem number one says find the rate of change from a table. So as we go through, the table shows the distance a band marches over time. Is the rate of change uh, and distance respect to uh, time a constant? So we're asking, is the rate of change constant from each point? So what we're looking is from these coordinates. What does the rate of change represent? Well, we're changing between 1 and 1 here and here. So what we're finding out is our change in our y over our change in our x. Well, basically, as you look through, we're increasing 1, increasing 1, increasing 1. So our change in our x, which is our time in this case, is 1. Okay, So it's kind of backwards. So it's on top here. It's on bottom here. Because, again, this is essentially like saying our x, and this is essentially saying our y. Okay, And then what we have is 260 to the 520. Well, we need to figure out what the change in that is. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to take this 520 and we're going to subtract 260. And we should get 260. And we would do 780 minus 520 and find what the difference is between that. We're increasing by 260 and increasing by 260 there. So what we're finding out is in between each term, there's a 260 increase. So our rate of change is 260, and it's going to be, because it was feet over minutes, feet per minute. That's what our rate of change is. Okay. So basically, it's finding that pattern, which we did in the previous uh, sections in Chapter 4. It's just finding what is the pattern from each coordinate as we go through. Okay, it says, what does this rate of change represent? Well, it represents that the band is marching um, 260 feet per minute. So you could write that band marches 260 feet per minute. That's all they're really asking for that when they say, what does the relation or what does it represent? Okay, so problem number two or example number two in your notes, go ahead and do on your own, and we'll check those tomorrow. Okay. Uh, rate of change we discussed, but well, then we go down and we talk about slope. Slope also known as the rate of change. Slope describes the rate of change of a line. So the difference between rate of change and slope is basically slope describes a line. Now you'll see this on roofs, you'll see this on um, hills, things like that. We have a slope which describes the steepness of this line. So if I draw this line, and it may be part of a, a rooftop. The house is sloping downward like this. That describes what the slope is like. Again, we represent this as rise over run. So you're going to hear that a lot. Keep that in mind as we proceed through. Okay, so we have rate of change is equal to slope, which is equal to the vertical change. So again, as we said, rate of change, which is kind of like the change in the dependent variable, and the horizontal. So as we go through, horizontal change, missed it in there. Um, as we go through there, so that's what we have. The other way to represent this is rise over run, as I talked about. So we're talking about how much did I rise up and then how much did I run over. Okay, And then the last part, which would be the formula, which is y2 minus y1 over 
x2 minus x1. Now it's very important that you have this part memorized. Okay, you need to really know this and you need to know this. Okay, that's what slope is. So let's talk about that. We have slope A. So problem A here, we have a point at negative 2, negative 1 and a point at 1, 1. What is the slope? Now there's two ways to do this. Um, one way is just to count. So basically we're going to make an L or a right triangle here. Okay, so we're going to form a right triangle and we're going to count how many units did I have to go up to be on this level of my second point. So I went one, two. So my rise was two. So when we say rise over run, this is how we would do it by a graph, just counting. So we rose two, and then how many we run over. So from here, we went one, two, three. So we went over three. So our rise over run is two thirds. And I'm gonna go ahead and write this. We'll talk about this more and more, but M represents slope. So our slope is two-thirds. Now if we do that same thing over here, we're going to make this L, okay, right triangle, that's what we're making. How many do I have to go down in this case? Well, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I had to go four units down. Well, down represents a negative. So when we do rise, in this case, since I went down, it's going to come out as a negative 4. And then we would run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. So it would be a negative 4 fifths. Again, our slope m is equal to negative 4 fifths. And we'll attach that later on in lessons. Uh, so our slope here is negative 4 fifths. Pretty simple. Just count the units. Now it went right, so that's positive. So up is positive, right is positive, down is negative, and left is negative. So keep that in mind. That's how we represent whether it's going to be positive or negative. Okay. Also, if it goes left to right and it goes kind of an increased manner, that is what we would call a positive slope. If it goes left to right and it goes down, that would be a negative slope. Okay. So got it, number two. Go ahead and figure out what those slopes are. We'll talk about those answers tomorrow in class and see if you can do those on your own. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop right there for right now. We'll go to part two. Um, so you can go ahead and click on the button right there and go to part two.